After adding the required information for your 1099s within the Maintain Supplier menu, you can run a report to see what will be printed on the 1099 by navigating to Accounts Payable, Reports, and 1099 Year End Payment Report. Select your company and subledger and enter your period from and to, which is generally going to be January to December. Select the applicable type of form and the report will pull all the suppliers who have been flagged to be part of the selected form. If you need to run a report for all five forms, you will need to run five different reports. For the 1099 MISC and 1099 NEC form, there is an additional flag. Include suppliers less than 600. For 1099 NEC and for certain boxes on the 1099 MISC form, if the payments are less than $600, you are not required to issue a 1099. However, you can choose to have them show on the form regardless of the amount. Then go ahead and print or export the report. The report will list all the payments that are being included in the total amount to be printed on the 1099, including cancelled checks and adjustments. It will also list the number of total forms that will be printed at the bottom of the report. Once everything looks good with the report, you can print the information on the actual forms by navigating to Accounts Payable, Reports, and Print 1099 Forms. Select your company and subledger and enter your period from and to, which will generally be January to December. Select the type of 1099 you want to print. If selecting 1099B, you will have additional options to include a description for box 1A, check mark for box 6, and option to flag do not print dates. This is the same kind of function as the combined payments flag in the maintain suppliers menu. If flagged, no date will be printed on the form. It is usually better to use the combined payments option in the maintain suppliers menu instead. If selecting 1099 MISC or 1099 NEC, there will be an additional field option to include suppliers less than $600. This is similar to the flag in the 1099 year-end reports menu. Set the type of form to laser forms to print the physical form. You can also choose magnetic media if you would like to submit the form electronically. If you select this option, fill in the magnetic media section which includes transmitter control code that was supplied to you, the contact name, phone number, and email address, and the path to create the file, which will default to your C drive in the IRS tax folder. It is recommended to add the year at the end of the folder name to help differentiate year by year. You can also change this file path if needed. When you click print, you will receive a pop-up letting you know the file has been created, how many supplier records were included, and the file will be saved to the file path specified. From here, you can go ahead and upload the file accordingly. Note that in some states, a text file is required. In order to upload the file in this case, simply rename the file after it is created and add .txt to the name. The selected button allows you to run the 1099 for a specific supplier or a range of suppliers. Print Grand Total Form 1096. If checked, this will line up with the 1096 form. Then go ahead and click Print. And Print. The form will usually line up with your printer. However, you will be able to print a test pattern if the form is not lining up quite right. You can adjust the horizontal and vertical print modifiers using the up and down arrow keys. Just a friendly reminder that after you print the 1099s, you will want to clear the adjusted amounts. This can be done by navigating to Accounts Payable, Files, and clear 1099 Adjust Amounts. This menu item will allow you to clear all adjustments so you do not have to go in one by one to clear them. Select your company and subledger and click OK to clear the adjustment amounts. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more how-to videos and don't forget to subscribe.